Hello everyone, today we are going to be discussing the Oliver model. A brief introduction about uh, Peter Oliver. He basically has occupied uh, most of the important educational position on the business. He was, a, he was an high school teacher, a guidance counselor. He has served as a professor of education at the University of Florida, the University of Mississippi, Indiana State University, and the University of Hawaii. He was a professor and chairperson of Saturn Illinois University, Florida International University, and Georgia Southern University. He is the author and uh, of several educational articles, journal, and textbooks, and also he is the designer and uh, <clears throat> author of the Oliver model that my fellow classmate and I are going to talk about the Oliver model focus on uh, student choice each student has uh, a unique artistic inquiry student examine the balance between freedom and responsibility educator must teach student to take responsibility for the creative contribution and influence on the world, which means when uh, educators start teaching students uh, to take charge, to take control of the responsibility, we'll have a better society and better citizen for the future. The Oliver model is a logical model in a sense that it provides faculty members uh, a process for the complete development of a school curriculum. This is something that we do not usually see in our public school system because 99% uh, of the time we hand a curriculum which we have to walk around it, we do not usually develop the curriculum. That's very reasonable that the, the teacher have the power to develop their own curriculum. The model also acknowledged that the need of students in the specific communities are not always the same as the general need of society because this makes sense because uh, every student, every area, every zone, every city have their own problem and issue that uh, we have to deal with. We have identified three features of uh, the Oliver model. The model is prescriptive, the model is linear, and also the model is deductive. Prescriptive, linear, and deductive. Prescriptive, it empowers the educator the, to develop his or her own curriculum. The educator has control to achieve his desired goal and outcome. Linear, the model displays a sequence or a progression to follow. It consists of 12 elements or components which are designed to follow sequentially. Deductive, in a sense, the model moves from the general to specific needs of each and specific community. Thank you. Peter Olivi's curriculum model is a complete logical and deductible model that was developed in FASIS. The model analyzes the development of the FASIS that are implemented in the curriculum step by step. It is organized, it was in order to create a firm foundation for student learning. The Olivia model contains 12 facets that make up the development of the curriculum.
mission of the institution. I call it mission of institution to the 12 facets of the Olivia model. I call it mission of institution because they represent a step-by-step -step how we have to develop the curriculum in where they focus on gener general students and community needs, especially the student needs, community and discipline. The purpose of general curriculum, a specific goal curriculum, a specific curricular organization, the broad objective of learning, the specific purpose of learning, the selection of learning strategies, selection of preliminary technique evaluation and selection of technique in of final evaluation, the implementation of the strategies, evaluation of learning, evaluating the curriculum, and every single facet, they interrelate each other because they're going to give you the clear explanation how we have to develop the curriculum, how this one has to be able to implement it, and how the curriculum is going to be used to develop the skills and domains in the kids. One and two. In order to develop a good educational plan, it is necessary to involve the community in the educational process. And the component three and four, to develop a great, great instructional curriculum, the focus should be on the interdisciplinary program. This should be dependent upon the community in which the school is located and the general needs. Component five and six, the instruction was designed to be implemented in such a way that observes and analyzes the behavior of the student interaction based on the development effective learning domains. Component seven and eight, in order to increase a student learning, we must identify their needs and review the development of the implementation in order to create a plan that meets the needs of the students. The company 9 and 10, they show you they have three facets for the evaluation before the instruction assessed previous, during the instruction formative assessment, and after instruction summative assessment. The teacher must be decide the number of days that will be dedicated to the topic. And the company 11 and 12, and the, that is the final uh, facets in where they check the program, evaluate the program, and they pass for every single facet in where they are ready to be implemented. Oliva model consists of 12 components. Under these 12 components, we find the planning phases, which falls under components 1 through 4 and 6 through 11. We also have the operational phases, which falls under components 5 through 12. The model follows a step-by-step -step process that helps curriculum developers to determine the specific needs of the students in general then the specific needs of the society to help set the aims. Once that is done, an even closer evaluation of the specific needs of that society, those students, and the subject matters take place to help set the curriculum's goal. This process also considers the philosophy of education of the community in helping to determine their educational beliefs. Also, we see the process follows a progressional pattern, yet it allows for the re-evaluation re of certain steps of the curriculum. If you can look at the flow chart, we see um, component 11 reverts back to component six, which will help to clarify the assessment of instruction to make sure that it focused on the instruction of goals. And also we have component 12, which reverts back to component three, to also focus on the evaluation of the curriculum's goal. The OLIVA model is applicable in many different ways. First, we see from the flowchart that we can apply it when designing a curriculum for a specific school and within that curriculum to help the, um, develop different subjects as well as deciding on the instructional and evaluation strategies. It can also be used for the planning of a school-wide program development. Faculties can also use um, the curriculum to help make programmatic decisions like um, focusing in on an interdisciplinary approach 
That way, I believe that students of different um, learning styles can pull information from different areas to help them better understand the, the components that are being taught, as well as using it with pre-service teachers like we are using in this class with this type of um, project-based um, activity. We're getting firsthand um, experience to apply it and a study that way can transfer or transition into the classroom. The Oliva model derived from the cell for sailor Alexander Lewis and SIP for context and put process and product models. Due to the limitations of these models, the Oliva model extended these models to provide educators with a thorough method in developing a complete curriculum design with both a planning and operational phase. Like the essentialist, the OLIVA model is teacher-oriented. Though the model focuses on specific students and community needs, it is prescriptive. The goals and objectives are already set for implementation. Hello everyone, my name is Caroline Duham and I would like to discuss with you the strengths of the all of a model. Let's start by discussing the point that I believe to be the strongest attribute of this model. The all of a model is based on the needs of the people and the students in society. I believe this to be the greatest strength because Oliver recognized that not all people in society have the same needs. Different demographics of people in different cities and towns all around the U.S. and the world do not necessarily have the same needs as each other. Next, the Oliva model is a deductive model. This is a strength because you must attain knowledge before you can develop a deeper understanding of the topic. The model is linear. This is a strength because, like most things in our lives, we progress linearly or in sequential order. It builds upon previous acquired knowledge. I think it is important to note that the Oliva model has evolved with time. This can be considered a strength because it is current and reflects the current trends of education. This ties in with the point that the Oliva model displays the need for change. This is important because we are ever evolving and acquiring new knowledge. Lastly, the model contains 12 components. This is a strength because it shows that the model is thorough. If you look at the diagram, you can also notice the use of squares and circles. This demonstrates the flow of the model and displays a great organization. Now we are going to discuss the limitations of the Oliva model. You will notice that the limitations are also points that we discussed as being strengths, and I'm going to tell you why this is. The Oliva model, while it does do a great job of tailoring its instruction to the needs of the people, it does have difficulty reaching the needs of all the members in the community. You will also notice that we listed the amounts of steps within the model as a limitation as well. This is due to the fact that it can be overwhelming. There are many steps, and while they are well organized and thorough, this might be overbearing and confusing to some. Now we are going to discuss the resources that the Oliva model utilizes. Since the Oliva model has such a heavy focus on the needs of the students in the community, we can understand that the resources utilized would be what is available to the teachers and students in that community or school community. Listed here are some examples of what teachers using the Oliva model might have access to. For example, technology resources such as online programs, educational games, and videos. The model utilizes textbooks and handouts as well as environmental resources and human resources. If you will notice, we have listed teachers separate from the rest of the resources. This is because the teacher is the most important resource available to a class. They are the heart of the class and they create rich content and implement fun and engaging activities for their students. Models for curriculum system development are a tool that help educators create consistency and serve as a guideline. Some of the factors that optimize the use of the all of the model are that the model offers a process for the complete development of a school curriculum. The various components of the model allow each specific subject areas the flexibility to shape and mold the model to the needs of the content area. Another factor that makes the model optimal is the fact that it focuses around the needs of the people. Oliver recognized 
all communities are different and that reflects in his model. As previously mentioned, the all of a model puts an emphasis on the needs of a specific school community. This means that it would be the optimal model for schools with a specialized goal. For example, schools with a focus on art and music or schools with a focus on sports and physical activity might need to meet different goals than your traditional public school. The model enables the educators in these schools to be flexible and tailor the model to fit the needs of their specific school community. This model would also prove to be beneficial for a private or Catholic school. Since Catholic schools put an emphasis on religious studies and faith, the all of a model would be ideal. It takes into account the fact that not all schools are the same or have the same mission. It provides the space to mold and shape the curriculum to fit the needs of the specific goals of a particular school. The Oliva model also puts a focus on improving a system. Steps 11 and 12 of the model call for the evaluation of instruction and curriculum. Thorough evaluation is essential to a successful curriculum, and the Oliva model gives educators all of the tools they need in order to improve a system. Thank you for listening.